Let's talk about smiles. Smiling is a huge category of behavior. At the most basic level, we can make one distinction that many people are familiar with between smiles that occur when people are really happy and other kinds of smiles. You take a look at this slide, you see these pictures of yours truly from several years ago. On the left, I'm modeling what's called an enjoyment smile, and on the right, it's a non-enjoyment smile. And the one on the left is, is different from the one on the right because it involves the eyes primarily. That's the biggest difference. You see contraction of the muscle around the eyes in addition to the smile shape to the mouth, which is caused by contraction of zygomaticus major. In fact, the, the smile on the mouth there is called AU12. And in the eyes, we see contraction of the lateral portion of orbicularis oculi in AU6. So the, that is the smile that Ekman and Friesen found in their, um, Ekman, Friesen and Davidson in their 1990 research found occurred when people said they were really feeling happy or amused in laboratory situations to elicit these emotions. They named this form of the smile, the Duchenne smile, after the French anatomist, the 19th century French anatomist, Duchenne de Boulogne, who first described this configuration. He said, in 19th century English, the smiles of true mirth had the eyes as well as the mouth. So that's the enjoyment smile or Duchenne smile. On the right panel, we see me doing just an AU12 um, without the eyes being involved. And that is called non-enjoyment, meaning in the same research I mentioned before, these smiles occurred in a lot of different situations, sometimes when people are feeling happy, but sometimes when other things were going on and they were feeling completely different things. So the smile with six tends to mark truly felt um, happiness, whereas the other smiles don't. But what is this other category? That's what I really wanna talk about in this little lesson today, is unpacking that non-enjoyment smile category, because it's super mi mixed, it's heterogeneous, there's lots of things in there. So let's take a look. What about this, the smile without the six? So just zygomaticus major, like that. What is that about? Now, you know, some people, I really don't like the distinction that some people make between um, genuine smiles and fake smiles and say that it has to have the eyes to be a genuine smile. It has to have the eyes, the, the smile form with the eyes marks true enjoyment, but that doesn't mean that other kinds of smiles don't occur when people are happy or feeling other positive emotions. You get a mixed bag. So sometimes people will just show this part of the face in positive emotion, but not as much as the other one. However, in, in other cases, people might just be being polite. You'll notice I'm smiling a lot while I'm talking in this video right now. Um, I'm not faking anything. I do enjoy what I'm talking about, but some of it's just part of social interaction. This is very culturally specific. Some cultures do this, other cultures don't, but smiling is a social lubricant in some contexts. So some of the smiles without the eyes being involved might just be polite smiles. Then you might have some of these smiles with just zygomaticus or AU12 that are not for polite or social reasons, but are for when people are trying to pretend to feel a certain way. So those might be shown in deceptive situations. And in, in the classic study by Ekman and Friesen and O'Sullivan in 1988, Smiles When Lying, uh, where they really mapped this out for the first time in a situation where um, individuals were being deceptive and trying to convince someone who was gonna be watching them that they were happy when they were not, they put on a lot of AU12s without six. So just a lot of the mouth part of smiles. So those kind of smiles can be deceptive. They can be deliberately deceptive, but depending on the context, they might not be. They might just be being polite. And in either of these contexts, and this is important, they might be deliberate or they might be involuntary. So like the smiling that I'm doing right now when I'm talking to you, and I'm not posing it, it's just kind of coming out of me because it's part of my behavioral repertoire. And some cultures are more smiley than others, some personality types are more smiley than others, et cetera. That's another talk. Okay, so some of these non-enjoyment smiles are just AU12, and they could be polite, deceptive, mildly happy, whatever. But there's also these other smiles that can have other actions with them. Other set of smiles where you have smiles mixed with other action units can be varied. They can be classified in different ways and a lot of it depends on the context because a lot of 
The same AUs may be involved. The expression itself does not define what it means. We need to know something about the context in which it was elicited. With that in mind, um, let's look at some of these. Um, sometimes we talk about people having um, what's called a masking smile. So these are in situations where we know there might be deception and that we see a smile and they're smiling and there are signs of other negative emotion AUs. It could be something in the mouth, it could be something in the brow, it could be something in the eyes. So for example, someone could be smiling with a little distress in the brow and whether that's a masking smile or not um, would depend on what other information you have about the person. Or they could show smile uh, the smile right after showing a negative emotion expression as an attempt to cover it up. So that's one category of mixed AUs with Action Unit 12 in a smile. Another category is what we might call embarrassed smiles. Now, um, I draw heavily here on the work of Dacher Keltner. In the work on embarrassment, what we find is when people have been in a situation in the laboratory, when they've been embarrassed, where they report feeling embarrassed by a situation that just happened, one of the things that happens in this sequence of behaviors, and embarrassment is a sequence uh, in terms of the embarrassment display, is a big smile right away that Keltner interprets as a sign of amusement at what happened. Um, so there's this big smile, and then quickly an attempt to regulate it with a smile control. In this panel, I'm demonstrating three different smile controls that can potentially diminish the appearance of a smile. So in the embarrassment display, which is self-conscious sort of by definition, you can see a smile plus an attempt to wipe it off. All right, so we have self-conscious smiles, our mixed smiles. We have uh, masking smiles that are mixed smiles. And the last category I'd like to mention is one called miserable smiles. Now, this is a term that um, Ekman and Friesen first um, coined in their 1982 paper, Felt, False, and Miserable Smiles. The felt and false part, I'll let you figure that out. It's related to du the Duchenne smile. It was prior to that research. But the miserable smile, what's that? They said this is when people will put on kind of a grin and bear it. That's an American English um, idiom uh, for kind of putting up with something that they don't really want to tolerate or, oh, well, here I'm sitting in this situation. So you'd get like a, a 12 with maybe action unit 17, which pushes the chin boss up, pulls the chin boss up. So here's a classic miserable smile. That's one form of miserable smile. That's sort of like enduring something they don't want to be put through. That's one interpretation of a miserable smile. But if we unpack this miserable element, what other kinds of misery might it reflect, it might we see? Um, and it's interesting, I was reading the literature on this. There's an interesting study by Ansfield um, in 2007, actually, where um, they studied people in distressing laboratory, watching distressing films in the laboratory and had observers rate their faces. So this was not facts. But they found that um, while viewing distressing films, people would smile often. What does this mean? You know, is this a masking smile? Um, are they trying to mislead? This would occur even when other people weren't present. It was a little more pronounced when others were present, but even when other people weren't present, you saw a significant amount of smiling in the distressing situation. And anybody who's done laboratory research on emotion with films or anything like that, like me, we can attest to that, that that occurs. So what's that about? I like Ansfield's interpretation, uh, especially when you see it alone, that it might be some kind of self-regulatory attempt, that the smile is an attempt to... Um, um, placate or quell um, the negative emotional arousal. It might have social functions to indicate how I'm not upset, whatever, but it might have self-regulatory functions as well.